Hey, it's Andrew here at Vespa Portland. Uh, today I'm gonna show you uh, this new Ram mount that has a spring-loaded cradle, so it's real, real easy to get your phone in and out of it with one hand, and uh, show you kind of how that thing goes together. So if you do get one and you're not having it installed by us, you can see how it goes on. So Ram mount has made a lot of uh, really awesome mounts over the years that hold everything from laptops and police cars to your phone while you're on your scooter. Basically, we're going to turn this pile of parts into this fancy holder that is spring-loaded, sits on your mirror, and has a nice double ball joint socket to keep it all in place where you'd like it to be. To get started, this is the ball joint that is going to attach to your mirror. And depending on the size of your mirror, there's a bunch of different shims inside the package to make that a nice fit. You've also got screws, of course, and nylock nuts, and an included Allen wrench in case you don't have one at your house. That is this part of the mountain right here. Next up, you've got the double ball joint socket arm, uh, fancy name. Uh, one side of the ball joint goes into this side, the other side goes in here. Pretty self-explanatory. To tighten it up or loosen it, you just spin that piece right there. And on the actual mount itself, it looks like that. And lastly, you've got the spring-loaded cradle for your phone. Spring loads like so, pretty easy. On the back here, you've got another ball joint, which will of course fit into here. And there's a bunch of different hardware here, which we'll walk through in just a sec. And that's going to look like this part right here when it's done. So this particular unit that I'm building today is going up to Jill in Seattle. So I'm not gonna open this up yet. Uh, on the Genuine Buddy, the size shim you need is number 40, which is that one right there. And it's real simple. All you're doing is taking the shim out and sticking the shim right here into the spots between the ball mount around the mirror to make a tight fit. Pretty simple stuff. And then just put the nut in there and the screw and tighten it down. All right, I've opened up the hardware pack for the cradle now, and you're gonna see there's a bunch of different stuff in here. First off, we're gonna talk about these screws. There's three different sets of two at various lengths. Now what this is for is the back of your cradle has this spot right here where you're gonna to have to put a ball mount. But certain things are different sizes and might be a little thicker to where you would need a longer screw. Uh, from what I've seen, you can get away with the smallest screw or the next largest screw. This one's a little too big. You'll start touching the back of the phone through the, uh, the hole here. And so we'll go probably with these smaller ones right here. Next up, you've got these four pins and four little screws and four nylock nuts that are tiny. You can see there's also these two larger nylock nuts. You want the four little ones, four little screws, and the four pins. Now what that's gonna do is you can see right here, you go through the back of the ram mount itself and you put the screw through the back. On top of that, the pin goes, and then on top of that is the nylock nut. Now the reasoning for that is you need to tighten these things down to the specific width of your phone. And so you don't want to have to take the phone out to tighten it, so it's easier to tighten it from the back. Jumping back a second, uh, what we'll do here is just take these larger two nuts, and very simply we're just going to drop them into the hole here. This is the easy part of all this. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver for all of these little screws. This part's a little tough one-handed holding the phone, but you're going to cover those up, flip this thing over, put this ball mount right here, and then pop the screws in and tighten them down. We'll just skip ahead to the end of that part. You can see when it's on there, it looks like that. It's tightened down. It's got nuts in the little holes there, and obviously nothing is gonna interfere with the phone because it's all flat. We use the smallest screws, the ones that were sitting right here. These are just extra hardware at this point. You can keep them in a drawer somewhere forever or just throw them out, you don't need them. All right, next up, we gotta figure out the pin placement. So this is a fake iPhone from Amazon, but Jill's phone is a Moto X. Uh, and she said it, it is roughly three inches tall and roughly six inches, or three inches wide, sorry, and six inches tall. This fake iPhone 10 right here is not quite six inches, but all we're really looking at here is where do your buttons fall? Because on the cradle itself, you've got two different options here at the top to put the pins in a place that won't interfere with your buttons. Obviously, you don't want to have that happen. Um, I'm thinking, based on an iPhone 10 that I own and this fake phone, and where the buttons are, we're going to put the pins in this bottom set and this other set, because once this thing is six inches tall, uh, I think if we put the pin in the top, we're gonna be close to the buttons. If I get this wrong, or if you get this wrong, just back it all out and put it in a new spot. It's not uh, the end of the world. 
All right, fast forward a bit and you can see the pins are on here. And I've got them uh, very loose. They're just moving around in there. What we've done here is we stuck the, the iPhone in here, the fake iPhone, and uh, you just kind of center it to where you would want it to, want it to be. And you can see the pins all just are free to move because I haven't tightened them down. The easy thing to do is to then just hold it up and make sure that you can see that there's no buttons being impacted. And uh, once it is centered, you can see that the pins fall right where they are. You can flip it around and hold those in place and tighten them down. Once you've tightened those top ones down, you see these ones are still loose. Just flip it over, same situation. I moved the phone so this isn't super scientific here, but uh, you know, tighten these ones down in place and you're good to go. Once you have it all set, your next step is simply to attach everything. So on your scooter, you're gonna have your ball mount. You're gonna then take your socket mount, just pop it on here, uh, keep it loose, put the other end of this ball mount in this part right here and then tighten the whole thing down. Okay, so once all that stuff is done, you've got a ram mount that comes out looking like this. You can loosen up the ball mount and kind of move this whole thing wherever you would like. If you want to position it behind a windscreen, that's also fine, or just whatever. From there, uh, you're just gonna take your phone, pop it in here, push right up, and it holds. It's not going anywhere. Your scooter is not gonna be going through this. So, you know, pretty secure stuff. You can, if you have a USB port on your scooter, you can just access that real easily right on this part and you have good uh, navigation ability on your phone now and, and whatever other functions you wanna use. Don't text and ride, that's not a smart thing to do, but use the maps all you'd like. And then of course, to get the thing out of here, you just push up and out and it's super easy. Uh, I don't know why I wore sunglasses this entire video, but um, this is Andrew here at Vespa Portland. This particular mount's going to Jill in Seattle. We've got these in stock. Excellent for any kind of food courier or, uh, you know, just anybody really. Having maps is nice. Traffic is a nice thing to get around. We'll see you next time.